Okay, so if you have a pen and a sheet of paper somewhere, we'll start this formula. First part I wanted you to write is um, F-I-T-T. Okay, and that's it. Yeah, I was just, we're going to get to the fit part in a little while. I just want to make sure you write it down first. So this formula is actually the formula for the expansion of sums. So why I took this formula is because we're going to discover and explore the many facets of what makes up rehab. Okay, so that's why it's an expansion of sums. So we're going to move away from this. And also in our conversation that we'll have today, we're going to look at how you can start the change towards improving quality of life. It's not me. It might be your other coaches. It might be family members. They might encourage you. But ultimately, it's up to you. All right. Anybody know, picture on the left, who drew that? Wow, all right. You guys know your history. Do you know the year? Oh, nope. 1490. Pretty close. All right. Um, so Leonardo, in his design and art, he said, humankind is about the reflection, humankind is the reflection of the universe. On the right-hand side, I have more modern version, kind of more 3D aspect. So I'm kind of borrowing from Leonardo and saying, well, we live in the interaction into and from our environments. So we could think about that circle, it's our environments, whatever that is. It could be a physical environment, it could be an emotional environment, it could be a spiritual environment. So we live within the context of those environments and what they mean to us. Yeah, I'm getting there to the, how does rehab work into that. But the other part is, what does this mean to us? It means that, kind of we heard today, when we think about advances in health and medicine, we think about you know, the latest and greatest new drugs, the miracle drugs, or we look at the advances in um, surgery procedures, i.e. radiation all the way up to you know, how in this last session here from the advancement of, well, we have photon stuff now, radiation, multiple beams compared to three planes. So um, aside from that, the other part that we need after the radiation, the chemo, the surgery, is what do we do in our everyday environments? And what are the lifestyle choices that we make? Because that's another important part of that missing piece of the puzzle of improving quality of life. All right. So the other part of quality of life, I'm going to do a little quick plug here. Out in the hallway, it's all the different um, community resources and healthcare um, services are available as well. So it's, um, yes, this is Calgary based, but if you're from Edmonton or anywhere else in Canada, it's looking within your own community as well, just to see what's around. And sometimes that's a little tricky because um, one of my good friends is coming in from, well, uh, where the heck is that? Timmins, Ontario. Anybody know where Timmins, Ontario is? Yeah, okay. So a small little place, very north of somewhere Ottawa, kind of Ottawa, northwest-ish, sort of. So kind of stuck in the middle place. So um, for him to go through um, some cancer stuff, well, he has to travel a big distance. So hopefully with the Brain Tumor Foundation, we're starting to do stuff as well for rural places. All right, that's it. Done with the plug. So... Before we get into the whole rehab stuff, a couple, I want to tease out the mind to see what is um, a couple definitions that we need to address, especially when we talk about rehab in terms of uh, brain tumor survivors and survivorship as a whole. So comorbidities, any guesses? None, all right. So that is more about two or more health conditions occurring at the same time. So, for example, uh, one that we'd never talk about is age. So, how is age a uh, health condition? Age, after the age of 25 years old, 
we lose 1% of muscle tissue per year. So, lifting things, pushing things, etc., might get a little bit more challenging. 1% per year after age of 25. Okay, so that doesn't help me out so much. So other things, so for some people I've worked with, they have diabetes, but they have osteoarthritis in the knees, or somebody has a headache migraine, but they also have hypertension. So it's kind of looking at what other things are going on in the human body as well. It's rarely just one single thing, rarely, nowadays, because we got to factor in age. So the other part is quality of life. Any guesses? No, none. All right. So I'll give you the uh, kind of definition that I picked up over the time. It basically encompasses well-being and satisfaction with life. So there's three parts because it's multidimensional. One is physical and functional status. So where am I at physically and functionally? Up and downstairs, as an example, can I handle that? And also the other one is our social well-being, how are we doing that in that respect, and also our emotional well-being. So that's kind of the parts of the quality of life aspect. Kind of make sense? Okay. So next one, I'm getting you to help me out with. So what is rehab? Come back to health? Okay, improving health. Anything else? Fix what I just said, okay. So kind of help out with the, the bum knees. Okay, anything else? Getting back to happy, okay. Okay, functional from where you're at. Okay, excellent. Table in the far corner. Because that's where I slept. Oh, sorry, no, I was just kidding. That's where I... Adapting, okay, yeah, and normal will change over time as well, okay, or finding a new normal. Over here, anything for what is rehab? Nothing. This table over here. Did you feed me some answers yet? Aside from bumping your knee into the chair, <laughs> repairing where you can, okay. Anything else? What is rehab? Uh, That's good. I'm getting you to see, I could feel the wheels spin. Excellent. So cognitive work, we're, we're doing some cognitive rehab right now. Excellent. Okay. Rehab. A whole whack of different things. So it could be, I had to borrow that, keep calm and go on vacation. Just had to borrow it. It could be going back to school learning some new academic things, or, wow, I'm, because of an injury, I can't do this work anymore. I have to go learn new skills to do a different type of work. Yeah, social media nowadays. Heck, uh, I'm sure the folks here at Brain Tumor said we're plugged into Facebook and Twitter and everything else. So let's learn about social media, so how we could communicate a little bit more, a little bit differently. Gardening, what about art? Somewhere over here, I think that's at, at the, the hospice group, there's about art therapy and play therapy. So that's part of rehab as well. So the question is, are we too old to play? Thank you. Whew. <laughs> Saved. All right. Never too old to play. Actually, there's actually some studies that saying for cognitive um, rehab, and this is where I kind of get away with it. And I could say, well, with nieces and nephews, I could go play video games. Because it actually helps you out for cognitive rehab. Because it's about space, strategy, time. So you're developing all that stuff in your mind. And especially when you go back to play it again. Um, so you could go on vacations as well. Go, go bistro somewhere. It could be local or it could be away. Um, so a whole bunch of different things. Walking, um, top right-hand corner, that's me on an elephant in Thailand. Go new experiences. That's part of rehab as well. Kind of make sense? Okay. So rehab, 
somewhat has that changed, what the definition is. It's not all medical hospital and all that stuff. Okay, okay, good. So to get into rehab and answer that one question that was on the slide of why should I care, how will this help me out? Rehab helps us out for doing these seven everyday movement patterns that we do every day, doesn't matter at what stage of life we're at. We do seven of them. So I was hoping for a whiteboard so I could write all this stuff down, but I don't have that. So any guesses to what one of the seven patterns that we do every day? Okay, I'll, I'll take walking, I'll call that gait. All right. Okay, bending is one of the seven. So bending, so sometimes we have the big bending. I'll call it this big bending. So I'm bending at the hips, the joints, and all that. But as equally, I'm bending my fingers to hold on to my fork or spoon so I could eat. So it's big movement or small movement bending. Okay, so we've got bending as one of the seven. I'm going to say no to reaching. But it's kind of, I'm going to say no to lifting as well. But it's incorporated into a, other stuff. Okay, thank you. Pushing. So where do we push in a day? Pushing out, you got out of bed this morning. Excellent, you got pushed up. What else did you push today? Buttons, okay, yeah. So, yeah, hey, I'm sending messages, so I'm pushing buttons. Anybody go to the washroom? Hopefully you push a door or a button or something like that, okay? But in pushing, I'm going to say there's vertical push and there's horizontal push. What could be a vertical push? What? Yeah, so you're pushing yourself out of a chair, so it's a vertical, yeah? So you're pushing something into a cupboard? Okay, and horizontal is, or downwards, I'm packing stuff in my suitcase. I'm pushing stuff in, okay? So we got push in, what did you say, Ben? Yeah, I got five more to go. Anybody else? Now, walking, we said gait. Oh, yeah, so gait. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so we got three. So we got four to go. Which is called a... I'll say formal name, it's called a squat. So we squat every day. Because you show me at least six times already. So where else do we squat in a day? Drop something? Okay. So, so work-wise, we might be doing it when we're visiting a washroom, in and out of cars. Okay. Um, anything else? Thank you. The opposite of uh, push is pull. Um, so we're reaching, um, what's a common one that we might need now for pulling? Opening doors. Or if we have an old-fashioned lawnmower, we need to pull. Or if we're going for an old boat ride, motor, pull. So once again, horizontal pull, or there's a vertical pull as we're pulling down as well. So if we're changing drapes or anything else in the house, we're well, guiding slash pull things down. Um, so, let's see, you got gate, bend, pull, push, squat, one more. <laughs> Drinking wine, okay. Nope, let's try. Thank you, twisting. Okay, so twisting is when we walk, we kind of have a little bit of rotation, right? So a little bit of a twist in the walk. So twisting, I'm gonna say there's two types. There's a rotational twist. So one of my favorite things, doing this. But then we also have an anti-rotational twist. So what could that be? Anti-rotational. So it kind of works with pulling, actually. So if we're pulling, I want to make sure I'm not really doing a lot of twist. So my body's going to stabilize. So it's an anti twist, per se. So we have the seven. So we have squats that we do every day. And, oh wait, 
Yeah, this one. Okay, I'm going to throw it in as a bonus for you. It's uh, lunges. So where do we do lunges every day? Aside from where, yeah, aside from the gym, where, where do we do lunges every day? Okay, if you go up and down, yeah, going upstairs. Anywhere else? How did you get to the chairs after the first break here? Well, okay, sitting down, but you, how did you get there? Walking. Okay, so walking is, I'll call it a baby lunge. So because in definition, a lunge is one leg steps forward as the other leg stays still for whatever period of time. So the seven everyday movements that we do are squats, lunges, pull, push, twist, bend, and gait is basically a combination of all those things. Because if I'm walking, uh, i.e. when there's a change in the curb or there's a big puddle, I might sidestep it, so I'm changing my gait. So it's a lunge and everything else combined. So out of those seven things, how hard are, how, not how hard, it could be how hard, but how easy are they to do? Relatively easy. Remember, we're losing 1% of muscle tissue per year after the age of 25. So still relatively easy to do? Okay, all right, let's check in. So I kind of want to do a little bit with the definitions, a little bit with the seven human wound patterns that we do every day, kind of give you a big overview picture. And now we're just going to do a little bit more of a deep dive into rehab. So why the rehab is going to help with those seven human wound patterns is that when we do those seven things every day in some form, in some shape, is that sometimes depending on a treatment effect that we get, is it could be either the medication or radiation or something like that, it gets us, um, doctors have said, fatigue. So rehab actually lessens fatigue. It actually boosts brain activity. And then it also helps with better sleep. Some of those are the kind of the big couple things to look out for in the uh, brain tumor world. All right, so before I go on to rehab, I just want to say sometimes there's some roadblocks or there's, I'll call it for lack of a better word, some barriers that get along the way in terms of reaching those benefits of being active and, and enjoying the rehab activities. Um, sometimes, so I put this on because sometimes, um, kind of a pun, and I'm guilty of this as well, is we're short-sighted. We treat whatever we need now, and we don't look for the big picture. So we're short-sighted in a way of we're not looking down the road. Like, so yeah, research shows cancer survivorship now is, you know, two, five, 10, 15 years. But how do we get there? So there's some research that's starting to pop up for that, but we need to really be looking long-term down the road. So that's why I kind of put that on. So we want to see, yes, we want to treat, like looking at the tree itself, we want to look at, hey, yeah, brain tumor stuff going on now, I need that treatment so it doesn't get worse. Um, but I also need to keep the whole force in, in view as well. So I need to look at big picture, quality of life, what's going to be happening of my new, my new life, my new chapters moving forward. All right. So status quo, you're part of how am I going to change that? So getting into rehab. So before I get into the, the uh, getting into rehab part, um, I like this slide because sometimes it reminds me of you know, stuff that we like seeing every four years. Nowadays, it's every two years. It's the Olympics. Um, my, my background's in health sciences slash kinesiology, so yeah, I love the Olympics all the time. The, it's kind of cool watching the athletes and everything else. Very specific training, very specific um, progressions that they do, you know, all those charts and everything else, specific exercises. But their Olympic event i.e. our gold medal skier here in 2010 in Vancouver, his run was what, 30 seconds or less? 
So 30 seconds. He knew specifically what he had to do for 30 seconds. He knew what moguls are, where to plant poles, and everything else. Airlift and everything else. So it's great that we have the Olympic athletes and everything else, or professional athletes, um, because it is Saturday and tomorrow is Sunday, just in case you're following NFL football. Um, but aside from that, we have to take a look at us. Us, we're everyday athletes. And my everyday sometimes is structured, sometimes it's not. So I'll borrow, I'll pick on her over here because she's closest to me. So at her workplace with little kids, bending, squatting, maybe it's a heavier day, a lot more of it, or a lot less than another day because it's more administrative. So a little bit more sitting. So our days as everyday athletes will vary. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, I'm doing um, you know, the, the work day or the today I'm going to Costco, but I know every time I go to Costco, I walk out of there with a whole full shopping cart. So now instead of my list being this small, it's like that. So there's a lot more lifting, pushing, bending, and everything else. So easy to plan for our days or a little bit more challenging. So that's why rehab will become really important in terms of um, making sure that we do those seven everyday movements in whatever fashion. So, you know, down the road, it's like, yeah, we'll be able to do something like that if we get to specific patterns. So, um, came up earlier today during the panel is, where do we go from here after we're doing our uh, formal, conventional, standard treatment, chemo, radiation, surgery? After that, for quality of life, where do we go? So, in the rehab world, the American College of Sports Medicine for cancer survivors gave a whole whack of different definitions. So, another part was, question was, is there like a best practices list? So, the American College of Sports Medicine, they meet every year. So, different divisions, but these cancer guys said, well, here's what we do. Aerobic exercise, 150 minutes a week, moderate intensity. Kind of like that word moderate. All right. Or 75 minutes of vigorous, if you want a little bit more bang for your buck kind of thing. They also said do strength exercises. So moderate intensity, two days a week, eight to 10 exercises, 10 to 15 reps kind of deal. And then they also do flexibility exercise, so stretch most muscle groups. For me, this is a guideline. You kind of heard I work with in the chronic pain, chronic health world. So uh, cancer is just one of those elements in chronic pain, chronic health. And for me, yeah, moderate, vigorous, what the heck? I kind of get a little bit scared of, about those words. So I'll say for aerobic exercise, it's more of what's a good pace for you? Because you have to listen to your body. Because to push really hard, maybe once in a while, it's like, wow, man, that bus or they're calling my name at the airport so I can make my plane to go to Maui or something like that, I better hustle. Yeah, maybe I'll sprint then, but that's one in the blue moon. So also in the strength exercise, I know from working with people with uh, fatigue um, concerns, you know, 10 repetitions, it's tough. So we want to get into more what I call tolerance levels. So tolerance level is like a baseline. So instead of looking at the guy and saying, wow, I got to do 10 repetitions, how about we start with five and see how we feel? Now, to me, five is better than zero. So we start somewhere. So I'll pick on the back table over here. So you shared with us today, you got your husband a dog for a walk every day. Oh, he got you a dog. Okay. I thought it works both ways. Okay. So on the walk, i.e. aerobic exercise, right? How long is your walk? 10 minutes? Yeah. So half hour, 10, like, it, it varies. And it could vary depending on fatigue level. It's like today, yeah, I want to go out, eat half hour, maybe not, but 10 minutes. We're still stimulating the aerobic system, the cardiovascular system, the heart and lung system to be better. So a lot of this is a guide, so keep that in mind. 
that they have some lofty goals, and the research kind of backs up their whole guideline as well. Um, the other part, too, is sometimes in the exercise world, we say, um, please do not do exercise while you're undergoing treatment. I, I know it really, that's where it becomes very individualistic about how you are. Because Cornier, uh, another well-known um, doctor up in Edmonton, he's done a lot of research in exercise and cancer. And this granted a little bit more on breast cancer, colon cancer, etc. But they actually showed benefits of doing exercise while in treatment because your recovery time's better, less fatigue, etc. That said, I know I said it's breast or colon cancer, but research in the brain tumor world, it's very limited. But I think you could transfer that information right across the board if you go with a guideline, and more importantly, you monitor how you feel. Because there's big health benefits in a six minute brisk walk as well. So I've seen that at a conference I was in Vancouver a couple of years ago. They looked at the six minute brisk walk versus the one mile brisk walk. One mile brisk walk takes me about 20 minutes to complete. I go, okay, that pace at six minutes. In my mind, six minutes, done. I don't have 20 minutes today, but I have six minutes. But you're still getting the same health benefit. Does that kind of make sense with the guidelines? So guidelines only, you don't need to bonk your head against the wall if you don't get 10 repetitions in. Okay, do not do that, bonking your head against the wall. Okay, so the other part, what we kind of started with as well, uh, when we're looking at some definitions, what's also kind of missing is we have other things going on. We need to pay attention to the other things going on. So. As was talked about earlier today, can I Google stuff? Yeah, absolutely, you could Google stuff. But just take it with a grain of salt as well as what you Google. Uh, because there is some research saying, yes, exercise helps out for headaches and migraines. Exercise helps out to reduce and lessen fatigue. Also, it helps out with memory um, concerns or problems, risk of seizures. So there's a study in Norway, actually, that they had a group of people looking at just seizures, just non-brain tumor. Um, but I kind of found it interesting because people, when they're engaged in consistent repetitive exercise um, program, had less incidence of seizure occurring because body was healthier and stronger. Muscle tissue was a little bit healthier. And so in Norway, that study was 60 minutes of aerobic exercise two times a week. So in the 60 minutes, ooh, two times a week? Eh. Well, you could think about 60 minutes. Can I stretch that out divided by seven? So maybe 120 minutes in the week for 15 weeks. So a little bit less than our guideline of 150 minutes. So we could kind of play with numbers and kind of get to 10 repetitions. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. All right, so yes, in the world of research and fatigue for exercise, it kind of feels kind of oxymoron because it's like, what the heck? I have to expend energy to gain energy? Yeah, it's kind of weird. But that's, that's a double-edged sword of cancer rehab as well as a whole is as we do the exercise, we get less fatigue and we gain energy, and we could have a longer day. All right, so under memory problems for research, I'm not saying crossword puzzles are bad, but I'm saying in combination with crossword puzzles, please do stuff that will challenge the body. So even in these guys in paraplegic games, well, I got a factor, what the heck, my hand speed is, so my brain's working. Hand speed, around the wheel, whole bunch of other people around me, going pretty good speed, I need to keep my balance, I need to lean a certain way, is there wind coming against me? So your brain is processing all this stuff all at once. So even when walking outside, in a windy day, I need to lean into my walk a little bit more. Or I'm walking outside for a snowfall, I need to maybe reduce half of my step of my my walk so I don't slip and fall. 
So your brain's always active and engaged. So when you challenge it to do it more, the research shows is that the more stimulus it could have, the more it boosts your brain activity as well. All right, so case study. Um, I know her very well um, for over the past 10 years, my mother-in-law. So she went through um, a diagnosis, a glioblastoma, right side, treatment, surgery, radiation, chemo, all that fun stuff. So she's hanging out at the farm now. So I just spent Thanksgiving weekend up there. Um, so she's 74. So I know the doctor said, you know, age is a factor. And from my background in rehab, age is a factor, especially the big one on, hard to see in the picture, but um, from when I known her 10 years ago to now, I could kind of see that muscle tissue decrease as well. So pre-surgery, very active. So, you know, she's gardening, she's out hanging out in the fields, they have cattle, so, and cattle's like her extended family, so knows them by name, names them actually, so gets kind of personal with the cattle. So, very busy. Um, and then she also has a history of diabetes, high blood pressure, and osteoporosis. So, during treatment, she's telling me, it's like, wow, I'm having a hard time. I said, what are you talking about? So, getting up and down stairs, in and out of vehicles. So, she's from uh, Trofer, Saskatchewan, so treatment was in Saskatoon. So, they have family there. So, I'm glad that where they stayed, they had stairs to go up and down. Bonus, indirect rehab, done. Um, but I said, okay, so how about you do some exercises while you're undergoing treatment? So, I gave her some specific, i.e., one of those, what's one of those seven things that we do every day? Squats, yeah. I gave her squats to do. And also straight leg raises, some knee extension and knee flexion exercises to just keep the muscle tone going. I think over four weeks, she's going, hmm, I could get in and out of vehicles a little bit easier. And I said, well, you have a whole whack of stairs going downstairs. I said, just go down two, come back up two. So she's been doing that as well. So we could start it really small and get the gains going. So with chemo and radiation, so it's Monday to Friday. So, and I said, please walk at least minimum six minutes, brisk walk. Yeah, she's probably close to you guys, 30, 30 minutes walking because she wants to go shop and everything else. I'm going, hey, retail therapy, all works, part of rehab. So done deal. Um, so, but on the other side of things, where I was coming into because of age and for me, osteoporosis, we need to improve the muscle strength. And that's why a lot of times rehab, they say, please do aerobic exercise, please do stretching. A lot of times rehab cuts itself short that we don't do a lot of stuff on the strength stuff. So keep that in mind when you're looking at what can you do as well. It's because we do push, pull, so push and pull, down the road, it's involved lifts and carries, etc. So we need that strength. All right. So yeah, she showed off her mask and she said, oh, that's kind of cool. I said, oh, awesome, Halloween costume done. So, okay, so with her, it was a strategy and there was some planning involved to come up with our fit formula. So my version of fit formula is the FX one. So the strategy is you're in treatment Monday to Friday. So we need some planning. So do you do it before or after? So she said, let's do it after. I said, that's fine. And a lot of it will be trial and error. That's the unfortunate part about rehab. You'll have to try some stuff and be okay with failing because it's a learning process. Wow, that didn't work out? Darn it. No problem. We'll change the game plan around. Um, and the other part is change as well. So start it small and go and gradually increase. So we, we had a little bit of a strategy, we had a game plan. I want to do some strength, I want to do some aerobic stuff. The planning was afterwards because beforehand it had been too rushed to get to the hospital and everything else. So afterwards, the whole part where I asked you to write down FIT, so we're going to go through FIT together. So FIT, the letter F is for frequency. How many times? So for her, it was walking every day. Strength was, I use the guidelines every other day. So that's my letter F for frequency, how many times. 
So how many times could be how many times do I lift, how many times do I do sit to stand or squats, it could be all that stuff. The letter I is for intensity, how hard. So the American College of Sport Medicine says please do moderate to vigorous. So that's kind of a cool guideline, but I'm going to let you decide what is moderate to what is vigorous. So on a number scale, uh, what I call a scale of intensity, I totally forgot to put it in, it's a one to five. One is very light, five is very hard. If I'm working right away in my first, let's say I'm lifting weights, and my weights is, I lift the first one, and it feels very hard, way too much. Granted, if it feels very light, eh, not bad for a first time round, because we're getting our body used to what exercise will be like, and that's fine. So the goal is about two to three, but if I'm doing my, so let's say if I get 10 repetitions in, my last two might be hard to very hard, and that's fine. Because we know that's muscle fatigue in a good way. Okay, so if I, so the first T is time or duration. So how long? So it really depends on your day. So personally, my workouts now are 15 minutes. So I have whole body movement exercises. So I have a squat, I have a push-up, I have a... So basically the big three, if you want to know exercise-wise, is squat, push, and pull. If you could do a squat movement, a push movement, and a pull movement, whatever that is, your big three, you hit most of the muscle tissues in the body. If you do 10 repetitions, as I'll say guide, 10 repetitions is roughly maybe one minute. So three exercises times one minute each, that's three minutes. Three minutes every other day. Yeah. Okay, does everybody know what TheraBand is? TheraBand. Um, TheraBand is like an elastic band, like in the rehab world. Okay, a couple other examples, hang on. So, where are we at? Hi. Right. So, last, so, duration. Right, so, that T. So, the last T is type. Type of exercise. Whatever's enjoyable. Is it aqua? Is it aqua rehab, or aqua vertical in the water, or swimming? Is it walking, kind of... Is it walking with your dog? Is it being out in the garden? Is it out in the kitchen and trying new recipes? Later today, I'm going home cleaning the house because my wife comes back on Monday. So I've been doing the bachelor lifestyle for a little while, so pretty bad. So cleaning house is activity, it's physical act activity. It's going to consume energy. Um, so any of those things, you know, it is a form of exercise. Is how much time do you want to sit down and do that? Social media, well, I could be lost there for many hours or days as well. But I'm going to set a time limit of 30, 30 minutes. Because that's what my body could take in tolerance. Right. So... The type of exercise or activity should be enjoyable because that way when it's enjoyable, you repeat it more often. And when you repeat it and become consistent, then those seven things that we do every day gets a little bit easier as well. So this, when we get into rehab as well, there is the activity and there's exercise specific like the push, pull, and squat. But those things we need to condition our muscle groups to make sure that every day we could handle those seven things a little bit easier. And also, come back to that 1% of muscle tissue per year after the age of 25. We want to keep up the muscle tissue strength. So, I'm going to come back to why should I care about rehab. There's a couple things up on the slide. Um, physical function, cardio, muscle strength, my mind boosts my activity. Aerobic activity is great. When I'm going out for a walk with a dog outside, it's kind of nice weather. 
it's, it's a great for a mind booster. Um, there's also a lot of good research showing that um, exercise and rehab really helps out with depression and anxiety. And I remember hearing Margaret Trudeau a couple years ago, who she said, I'm bipolar. She said, exercise really helped me out. So there's a lot of research that way as well. So there's many facets of how rehab could help for so many different health conditions. So importantly, too, in the brain tumor, maybe not as much, but definitely in the cancer world, it's reducing or dealing recurrence and also dealing or reducing occurrence of secondary conditions, i.e. diabetes, hypertension, and things like that. It could really put kind of uh, the brakes on those. And definitely brain tumor and cancer rehab is, it helps out to delay or offset the effects of cancer treatment. We kind of heard some stuff about how some medications have toxic effects. So I know, um, aside from my mother-in-law, my father went through lung cancer, so I could see the radiation marks uh, on him. And I'm kind of going, well, I was hanging out with him at the, in Ottawa and saying, hmm, hey doc, what about, uh, I know you guys here at the Ottawa Hospital have um, cancer rehab because some of my colleagues and good friends I went to school with work here. It's like, ah, we didn't really think about that if he's up to it. I'm going, okay. So what about lymphatic because we have some damage and all that and uh, we kind of want to help restore some of the lymphatic uh, pathways. It's like, eh, maybe he, if he's up to that. I said, well, hang on. I'm thinking in my head, that should be part of the care plan. So that's why I said sometimes, even as healthcare professionals, we shoot our own feet kind of thing or whatever that phraseology is. Um, we really, hopefully, as you basically being i.e. NFL football again, you being the quarterback of your own health, ask those questions. Where can I go for this? Who do I know? Or start to have a good friendship with uh, Google to see who's in your community. And ask the questions about what's your experience or what's, have you worked with this? Have you worked with somebody with brain tumors before? Or have you worked with somebody with osteoporosis or et cetera? So make sure you ask the questions. So, I know sometimes in the brain tumor world, it is cancer or non-cancer, but it is about living. And living is about quality of life. So it's more of um, why should you try about improving quality of life? And why do you do rehab exercises? Why do you learn a new recipe? Why do you get up that early? Or this morning, why do you get up this early? Come here, hang out a whole, whole day. And why do you go do that? So those are good questions about why, but we want to be living. Because that's part of quality of life. And then the cool question about why is a better question is why not? So why not see how far you can walk? Yeah, my dad, after lung cancer, his living room was two of those panels. Two minutes, then he was tired. But now he's up to 40 minutes. He's showing me pictures about walks that he goes out to. So it's a slow progression and you build it up. Because if you walk into 40 minutes right off the bat, that might wipe you up for two weeks. Then that's not so good. So the why not is also, why not taste a new recipe? Why not see how much you could lift? And why not enjoy the view of Lake Louise and or Banff? Because a lot of people from all over the world, they travel far to come here. So, and then my other question with quality of life is, why not you? So, kind of why not try out the cool little bistro that's in Inglewood or in Kensington? Yes, Denny's is okay, but sometimes trying out some new experiences is also really good, or trying out some different flavors of wine as well. So why not go out and enjoy, like we live close, we're, we're blessed in a way that we live close to uh, major National Geographic top 50 places in the world to go see out in Banff. So why not you? Kind of get involved in commerce, get involved in family, get involved in the community, be in love, it's all that stuff. And then 
My last question as we finish off, why not now? So it's not delaying for your future. You could start tomorrow. You could go later today in Google. Hey, how can I plan for a good progression for safe exercise or safe rehab? Start having conversations with family members, with friends that you may know about, hey, I've seen you do rehab or, you know, hey, what about the sailing stuff? I'm kind of interested in it. How do I start? And, you know, accept change and be friends with failure as well. Because, like I said, it's going to be a test and trial. And you'll fail some stuff, but it's a learning process of how we move forward to be even better. And then, I'm pretty sure as heard today, is definitely have a feeling of one of these days we'll be hearing your story. And to some degree about how you improved your quality of life through doing various physical activities or specific rehab exercises. And that's it.